Hello everyone and welcome back to game week four of the 23-24 PTC Therapeutics Premiership where you join myself Ryan Sipple and my co-commentator Ollie Crawshaw for this game between Nomad Knights and Newcastle United Foundation. Ollie, are you okay? Yeah, I'm doing good. How are you? Yeah, really well, thank you. Looking forward to this one, certainly yeah. considering the form they're both bringing into this. Nomad Knight securing a fantastic nil-nil draw against title challengers Teesside. So be interesting to see if they can replicate that performance here against Newcastle, who have only faltered against Teesside this weekend. Give me your prediction, Ollie. Well, obviously with the game between Nomad and Teesside, Heart is very t uh, nomads done really well to hold them off. I think this will be another close game. Obviously, playing for Newcastle, I'm hoping they can do the job and then get closer, that closer T side. But I think it will be very even. Yeah, Newcastle in fourth currently. A win here could see them match T side in the standings or go to a point behind. I believe. Sorry. Um, so this could be really crucial for their overall season as they chase their highest placement in the National League. Nomad Knights currently in 11th. They sit six, certainly prior to this game, they sit sat six points behind Manchester United in 10th. So they have some work to do if they are to avoid being automatically relegated to next season's championship. Some early pressure from Newcastle via Ethan Fisher. Nomad Knights comprised of Regan Kemp as the designated goalkeeper in black. He'll play just in front of Kai Shah, Abigail Bolt and Bobby Allen on either wings, all adorning a nice purple kit. Newcastle United have Ethan Fisher in pink, their outfield players. Lee Armstrong, Albie Morris and Sam Smith. Bobby Allen into the box, off the left hand post, out for a goal kick. to Kaisha. Ethan Fisher now met by Regan Kemp and Kaisha. Trying to force his way through the Nomad Knights defence. Fisher. No real obvious options in support. Sam Smith just creates the angle now. Albie Morris well marked. He opts to find Sam Smith. Trying to return the pass to Ethan Fisher. Gets locked up by Nomad Knights captain Abigail Bolt. Aspire set to kick off on court B against Leeds Chariots. As we've mentioned, they faltered slightly in their earlier game against Villa Rockets. Did you catch any of it, Ollie? Uh, I don't. I think it was on in the room, but I think we were all discussing like team stuff. Yeah, it's, it was interesting. They were. In terms of attacking intent, they dominated Villa Rockets across the 40-minute fixture, but couldn't find a way past. I have to give full credit to Amir Ali and particularly Hamza Madir. West Brom will be delighted with that. They still trail West Brom. Sorry, they still trail Aspire in the standings, but that three-point gap has been limited to just one. And with West Brom having a more favourable goal difference, it almost certainly will go down 
to game week five of the Premiership in June. Sam Smith to Ethan Fisher, blocked by Bobby Allen. One of the most talented young players anywhere in the country. Be interesting to see if he can influence a result here. Sam Smith doing well to restrict the advancement of the Nomads number 10. Fisher across the court, the front of Albie Morris's chair. Manages to find Sam Smith. the side of Regan Kemp's chair. Fisher. Out of play. Nice pick off from Albie Morris. Read by Regan Kemp. Lee Armstrong for his first real involvement in this game, five minutes in, Nomad Knights nil, Newcastle United nil. Should there be any updates on Court B, I'll bring you them. Fisher to take, into the box, Albie Morris meets the ball, into Regan Kemp, not before a two-on-one is awarded in favour of Nomad Knights. Mark Kerrison, our central referee. Peter Westmoreland on the right as you're viewing it. Paul Yates on the left. Nomad Knights coached by Stuart Allen. Newcastle have Jamie Harrison. Good work from Sam Smith. Bobby Allen just closes the channel to Ethan Fisher. He'll have to do that throughout this fixture. Don't want to give the Newcastle number 10 any excessive space to pick his passing. It's probably his best attribute. Generate some serious power, can't he, Ollie? Yeah, definitely. Especially playing with him. It's great. I've probably mentioned this before, but it's great as a winger getting that amount of power on a on the ball out wide because then he's already gen generated the power and then it's easier for the switch across to the other winger or for the shot. Am I correct in saying this is only his second season for Newcastle since his transfer from North West Bees? Yeah, se second second season obviously yeah. we're approaching the end of the second season yeah. so next season will be his third but he's just integrated into this side seamlessly as Regan oh, Kemp attempts an effort obviously he uh, is very highly regarded on the England talent pathway alongside yourself so yeah. um, I'm sure you're itching to get back to re-establish that chemistry both at club level and international level yeah definitely Controlled by Kai Sharp. Two on one in favour of Newcastle. This a really good opportunity. Well, it certainly was signalled for that. But it's a kick in on the far side. Let's see how they best utilise their set pieces. They've been so effective in game week four. As you can see, nil-nil on court B. Commentary brought to you live from Charlie McClellan for that one. That's also live on the WFA's YouTube channel. It's good play from Ethan Fisher there. Just to fire it off the front of Kai Shah's chair. Another corner kick. We've seen them make them count 
so far this weekend. Lee Armstrong now the player in the centre. Albie Morris at the back post. Probably the intended target for this. Absolutely is. Fired into the side of Kai Shah. The danger still present. Well worked set piece. Dealt with by the Nomad Knights defence. Lee Armstrong probably the most advanced he's been up the court all game. That won't trouble Kai Shah. Their defence was brilliant against Teesside. We just look at the Newcastle United goal scorers. You can see that the Nomads defence will have a lot of work to do to limit it. Sam Smith on 14, Albie Morris on 9, Mr Crawshaw on 7. H hoping to make that more when I come back for June. There's absolutely no reason why you can't get into double digits comfortably. Certainly if you've got Ethan Fisher pulling the strings in the centre. This is Newcastle United Foundation's final game of game week four. Game week five sees them play Nottingham, Aspire, West Brom and Seven Oaks. And it looks like Leeds Chariots have taken the lead against Aspire on court B. I'll bring confirmation of that one if we get it. Albie Morris with possession on the right and in space. Sam Smith is going to have a go at goal. Regan Kemp adjusts brilliantly well danger still present and Albie Morris lovely team goal really was all action here at the Lee Westwood Sports Centre goals on both courts Albie Morris here eight and a half minutes to go of this first half broken the deadlock we bring confirmation of the game on court B you can see Leeds Chariots have taken the lead official confirmation there so Aspire having a difficult day at the Lee Westwood Sports Centre West Brom still have one game more to play against Villa Rockets at quarter past four the team that prevented Aspire from winning earlier Abby Morris looking to double his team's advantage and his own personal goal tally here against Nomad Knights. Abby Bolt with a rare involvement. You can see from that live table, West Brom would sit a point behind Aspire with that result, but would have a game in hand over their title rivals. Newcastle would climb to 40, one point behind Teesside with this current scoreline 1 0. Albie Morris, the goal scorer, will probably be the target for this Ethan Fisher set piece. Followed up by Lee Armstrong. Into Albie Morris, he can have another attempt at goal. Couldn't quite get the angle to trouble Regan Kemp. It's nice football, though, on the edge of the Nomad Knights box. Ethan Fisher over to Lee Armstrong blocked by Kai Shah six minutes to go it's 
lapse of concentration from Albie Morris there. there wasn't the space for him to roam into it so an inevitable two on one awarded to Nomad Knights Abby Bolt trying to restrict Sam Smith from gaining any more ground up the court. Very congested in this final third attempt from Ethan Fisher. Slightly forced. It was three Nomad Knights players in the way. The open 15 minutes of this game. No man have done really well to only keep the score at 1-0 with the pressure that they're receiving from Newcastle. It's similar to a, no a number of other teams towards the bottom of the Premiership that they're just growing into the season as a whole. And it's just a shame that we only have five weekends because if there was five, if there was more than five, um, I think you'd see a very different league table. We've seen Nottinghamshire, Manchester United, Seven Oaks all get valuable points in pursuit of Premiership survival. Nomad Knights getting a brilliant point against Teesside. Hull and East Yorkshire, the only one yet to secure points in game week four. But we saw that defence against Teesside, and Newcastle can vouch for the fact that there's some world class players in that squad. having faced them yesterday. Four minutes to go in this first half. Still just one goal separating in the two. Newcastle will want a slightly larger buffer than just this current 1-0 lead. Well kept in by Ethan Fisher. No real clear options in support, so he has to go all the way back to Sam Smith, and that's good football, restricted by Regan Kemp. Fisher, he found the gap. Albie Morris just didn't anticipate that ball. Finding the space on the left-hand side of the box. Must have taken a touch off one of the Nomad Knights chairs because corner kick has been awarded. He's millimetres away from Fisher scoring it. Fisher over to Lee Armstrong. Two efforts, both blocked by Kai Shah. Into the path of Albie Morris, dribbled out by Kai Shah. No bad night to do that options on the bench George Holloway and Jack McNaughton single substitute for Newcastle in Aaron Guthrie who registered his 50th National League goal yesterday ricochets to Regan Kemp front bumper pick off to Bobby Allen have to be careful going to go out for a Kick in. Slight confusion as Bobby Allen came over to take it, but Sam Smith will now have responsibility. All the way back to Lee Armstrong, really well left. That would have been a fantastic goal had they scored it set pieces nowadays they're just so big in the team's progression to get challenging for the title because they you get them so frequently they're just so big to have certain ones nailed down that you know that you can do it as a team and that you're confident with certainly the top t four teams of the division in aspire west brom teesside and newcastle all of them have scored really good set pieces in game week four Two on one in favour of Nomad Knights. We're now into the final minute of the first half. 
Nomad Knights nil, Newcastle one. Bobby Allen with an attempt at goal. Could have probably put a little bit more power on that one. Good work from Albie Morris. Over to Sam Smith. That's very unlucky. That really is unlucky. Credit to both Albie Morris and Ethan Fisher. It didn't look like the path to their teammates were on, but both of them found the intended targets. And a potential break as Bobby Allen has an attempt at goal. Lee Armstrong has to make a save, even though he is well advanced into his half. Which is play, Albie Morris. Didn't quite have the position in to continue advancing down this right hand wing. Nope. Slightly delayed in his reactions again, but Newcastle do win the ball. We're now into additional time. Mark Kerrison takes a look at his watch. Sam Smith has one final attempt at doubling the lead. And that will be the last involvement of the first half. Thank you to all that are joining myself and Ollie Crawshaw. We will be back very shortly for the second half.
Hello everyone and welcome back to this fixture between Nomad Knights and Newcastle where you join myself, Ryan Tipple and my co-commentator, Ollie Crawshaw for the action live. Halftime on court B, Leeds Chariots won. Aspire nil. Aspire having a really difficult day. They dropped points in a nil-nil draw to Villa Rockets earlier and now have a metaphorical mountain to climb if they're to reverse that result and take home the three points. Newcastle probably don't have enough to catch the top pack, but never say never. One nil here. Nomad Knights still desperate to fight for Premiership survival. They have all have to make up some serious ground in game week five if they are to beat the drop. Give me your thoughts on that first half, Ollie. Yeah, it was what I was thinking. With the games this weekend, Nomad have done really well at soaking that pressure and concede very little. So that's what my prediction was before the game. Yeah. That that's exactly what's gonna happen. No, I was impressed with them in the first half. If they can keep this at 1-0 scoreline for as long as possible, there's no reason why they can't potentially break and find that equaliser. Albie Morris was the goal scorer in the 12th minute. There was some really good opportunities for them to add to their tally, but full credit to Kai Shah and Regan Kemp. Early on in the second half, and that's going to be a really good opportunity. It looked like it was over the line from our angle, but still live. Nomad Knights defenders did well to restrict Sam Smith there. He looked almost certain to double their lead. Two on one in favour of them. So a little bit of respite on their defence. One final round of fixtures left in the season in June with everything to be settled and decided both at the top and the bottom of the division. You can talk from experience, Ollie. How have you found the level of competition of this season compared to seasons gone by? It's very different. Like The level of the championship when we first come up three seasons ago we, it took us a few weekends to get into like and understand how good all the teams are in the Premiership. And the teams in Championship, don't get me wrong, they're good too, but the quality difference is just unbelievable. Yeah, there is uh, a difference in quality between the Premiership and Championship, but I will say it's definitely getting smaller and smaller. You're te seeing teams come up from the Championship. It's a good effort from Ethan Fisher and compete. Um, so when you've got Nomad Knights who were champions last season uh, getting a point from Teesside who are title contenders that probably puts into perspective that uh, the competitiveness of this league is the best it's ever been Manchester United who are also promoted got a great point great three points against West Bromwich Albion and Throstles when we come up through the championship I think we come up with Leeds and Teesside as well and three seasons later we're all challenging at the top of the table which is just great to see for sport that championship teams can actually come up and challenge so quickly Fisher down into the box of Nomad Knights there's confirmation the current score on court B each chariot one spire nil that still has 20 minutes left to be played i wouldn't want to be one of the aspire players now receiving instructions from their captain john bolden i can't imagine he's too happy with the level of performances they've produced today ethan fisher has sam smith in support down that left hand wing Back to Fisher, looking to switch it to Albie Morris, but 
gives possession back to Bobby Allen. Too much spin and pace for him to keep it in play, which will be fortunate for Ethan Fisher because it would have been a potential break for Nomad Knights. We're just going to stop as Albie Morris has an adjustment with his chair. We are back ready by this kick in. Lee Armstrong just gives responsibility to Ethan Fisher. What is the aim of, of set pieces like that from Ethan? Is he just to fire it off one of the defenders and then capitalise on the rebound? Yeah, that's one of the things. And uh, also, we're quite clinical at corners, so just aim to try get corners yeah. is what we usually do. But we've got set pieces for sidelines as well, so we can ch change it up when we want to. Of course. Good distribution from Fisher. Can Sam Smith catch up to it? He can. Control not the best, so Kai Shah limits the space. In doing so, didn't leave enough space between himself and Bobby Allen. Two on one in favour of Newcastle. 25 minutes played. Nomad Knight, nil. Newcastle, United one. Indirect free kick to resume play. Pick off from Albie Morris over to Sam Smith. The ball just trapped in the Nomad Knights box. play substitute for Nomad Knight George Holloway comes on Bobby Allen comes off as you can see from that graphic Abby Bolt the only Nomad Knights player to register goals in the 23-24 campaign five to her name Down the court from Ethan Fisher. Ricochets out for a corner. Confirmation of that substitute made by Nomad Knights. Jamie Harrison yet to look to Aaron Guthrie on the bench. Takes his time. An effort from Albie Morris. Blocked by Regan Kemp. Sam Smith over to Morris. Can attempt an effort at a goal. Wide of the right hand post. Kai Shah had that post covered. Had it been on target anyway. Back underway on court B. Or Aspire Trail. Leads Chariots by one goal to nil. Sure, there's some very happy West Bromwich Albion players in and around the Lee Westwood Sports Centre. Fisher. And a short clearance from Regan Kemp. But two on one awarded by Mark Kerrison. Indirect. Ethan Fisher to take Sam Smith between Regan Kemp and Kai Shah off the back wheel of Regan Kemp. Potential break for Abby Bolt, but the space limited and closed by Ethan Fisher. The strong play over to Alby Morris. Sam Smith trying to capitalise and front bumper pick off between the two Nomad Knights defenders. Albie Morris now on double digits for the season with that earlier goal. So congratulations to him. Ollie Crawshaw shaking his head. It's always a fun 
competitive this and the competition between you two as to who can score the most goals yeah definitely it's there every season but fair play to him he's done really well it's all on you now to make up the ground in game week five hopefully when i very much look forward to your potential return to the court yeah got some tough opposition to face in that weekend so yeah Spire and West Brom on the same weekend no one wants that but we took three, uh, three points from West Brom at the start of this season so hopefully we can do that again and then hopefully we can take three points from Aspire for the first time which will be massive corner kick from Ethan Fisher it was a great pass in that passage of play from Lee Armstrong to just break the oncoming press of Nomad Knights. That one doesn't come to anything. Pick off from Albie Morris over to Sam Smith. Off the left hand post. Looked almost certain to be their second. But fortunately for Nomad Knights, it remains 1 0. Albi just couldn't quite get there in time. They've had a few shots like that. They've ricocheted off the left hand post. Obviously, myself and Ollie are commentating from ground level, so we can't sometimes make out whether the ball has crossed the whole line. Certainly, when the attack is over the other side of the Lee Westwood Sports Centre. When it's our end, we can determine it with a bit more certainty. Fisher, rotated spin kick. Blocked by Wall of Purple. It's great work from Abby Bolt there. Oh, keeps it in play, the whole ball and its curvature has to leave the red line designating the side of the court. Armstrong. You can see Nomad Knight starting to get a little bit braver, searching for that equaliser and committing more players forward. They need to be careful about the potential vulnerabilities that lead leaves in defence. But I like to see that. Good work from Lee Armstrong there. He's going to let that roll out of play. See if they can make this set piece count. It's a kick in high up the court on the right. Taken by Lee Armstrong into the box. Blocked by Regan Kemp. Falls kindly to the number eight for a second follow up effort. Alby Morris back to Sam Smith on the edge doesn't quite have the accuracy just over seven minutes to go still just one goal separates these two really impressed with what I've seen from Nomad Knights Especially in this second half for me, having the confidence to commit the players forward at the risk of conceding another one. And they've done it in good quality as well, they've had their chances. Spire still trailing, desperately looking for that equaliser. In our line of sight, we can see the Leeds Charity's defenders constantly trying to restrict the attacking players of Aspire from finding that equaliser. 
here on court A. Myself and Ollie watching the final six minutes of this game between Newcastle and Nomads. Newcastle can see this game out now. Another massive weekend for them. Picking up points. As last weekend they got four out of four and this weekend five out of four. Albert Morris in a really nice position there, but a last ditch clearance from Regan Kemp limits the damage. Ethan Fisher comes over to take. Albin Morris, the closest player, probably a screen for Sam Smith, who finds it at the back post. Reversed out of play from Kai Shah, so another corner, this time on the opposite side. Ethan Fisher, over to Albin Morris, blocked by Kai Shah, potential break on by G George Holloway Kemp swept up by Ethan Fisher they won't want to do anything too rash here in the final five minutes that jeopardizes this three points with Teesside dropping points to Nomad Knights earlier today. A win for Newcastle here would take them within a point of their northeast rivals. Substitute for Jamie Harrison as Albie Morris, the goal scorer, comes off. Aaron Guthrie, the player, taking his place Over to Aaron Guthrie, nearly makes an immediate impact. Didn't quite anticipate that ball would come in so much speed from Ethan Fisher. The, the power and the speed that Ethan can generate from corners is really good for them. Their players getting the ball getting past the opposition players, but then it's sometimes a bit too fast for our own players to yeah. get. To his ball. It's something you you will have to adapt to, isn't it? Yeah. There's few players in the country, if not the world, that can hit a dead ball as cleanly, as sweetly, as powerfully as Ethan Fisher. There's only a few in the National League Premiership that I can think of off the top of my head that come close. Lewis Harris is one of them of Leeds Chariots. I know Nomad Knights have Jack McNaughton yet to feature in this game. He could almost be referred to as a dead ball specialist. Interesting to see if he features at all. We've got less than three minutes remaining in this game. Just managing the game now. Good work from Sam Smith. Over to Ethan Fisher. Drawing Kai Shah out of position. And Aaron Guthrie centimetres away from finding the net. Newcastle are getting quite unlucky. They've had quite a few shots that are centimetres away from going in. But Nomad have done really well to only keep it at 1-0. They, re the they really, really have, they really have, and they, they, they've got to take positives from this, even if they come away with the loss. The fact they've been able to limit, limit the damage, as you can probably hear from the cheers in the Lee Westwood Sports Centre, Brad Bates has found the equaliser for Aspire. They have eight and a half minutes to find a winner. Here on court eight, we have just a minute left as a ricochet falls over the line. 
think it's going to go down as an own goal. I'll certainly put it down as one. And if that, that may get corrected, happens so quickly. But delight for Jamie Harrison. That's very unlucky for Nomad. That really is. Their defence this whole weekend has been really good to limit the goals scored. And that deflection, you can't do anything about it, really. Well, we spoke about Ethan Fisher's power and accuracy on dead balls, and that will always be a threat, yeah. all the while he's got responsibility of them free kick, uh, some them kick-ins or corner kicks. But I was saying prior to that goal being scored, I don't want I want uh, Kai Shah and Nomad Knights to take huge positive from this performance. Definitely. They've done well in defence, but they've also done well going forward when they've had their chances. They've put, put some passes together and pressure on the Newcastle defence, which they need to take as a positive. We've had the regulation 20 into additional time. In game week five, Nomad Knight face three teams in and around the bottom placement. So survival is still in reach. They play seven Oaks, Villa Rockets, Holland East Yorkshire and Manchester United. So a late rally for them could see them pick up nine points potentially even more if they continue to put in defensive to play displays such as this I'll bring up the table at the conclusion of this one Ethan Fisher cushion ball into Sam Smith a minute over time and that will be the end of the game. Nomad Knights nil, Newcastle United 2. Congratulations to them on a fantastic win. Let's bring up the league table, the live league tables. So it takes into consideration the point apiece for Aspire and Leeds. Still six minutes to play. But Newcastle will go on to 40 points. 13 wins from their 18 games. A really impressive accumulation of results. But... Nomad Knights faltering slightly six points behind Manchester United so their hope in game week five will be to pick up as many points as possible and hope Manchester United or Nottinghamshire falter slightly. Thank you to all that have joined myself and Ollie for this one. Next up on Court A we have West Bromwich Albion Throstles versus Nottinghamshire. <laughs> 